Hello out there. Hope everyone's doing good today. I don't know why I keep forgetting to unmute to mute my microphone. I gotta stop watching Twitch and <laughs> during the day. If you're in the chat or new to the stream, say hi. I also gotta fix this screen too. I really need to know donations or subscribers. Hopefully everyone's having a great day. Today we're going to be talking about or finishing up the migration from SQLite to SQL Server with our contacts application. Uh, if you're new to the stream or the video series, we've been doing kind of a starting out with an application from scratch, absolutely nothing. We started walking through our IDEs, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Codes, JetBrains Writer, and then walked into building out a basic contacts application. Try to avoid the typical hello world type of applications because you gotta, there are a lot of them out there. So we started with a very basic contact application. And don't plan on building a contact application, you know, for a production or anything, because there's a zillion of them out there. But at least everyone understands the contact, the concept of you know tracking contacts. So we started out building models, then went into the business layer, then worked on database layer, worked on unit tests, built out an API. You can follow along with this guide here. Uh, a couple of helpful tips. If you see a link for a video, you can click on that and get to the actual video for that particular stream, as well as a link to the source code. Are there any other links to that episode of sites we visited or reference material, like here when we were creating the any framework connections, we based it off of these articles here and with SQLite. We then swapped out the data objects that we were using from the domain into a separate data object access so that we can do what we're going to do now, and that's replace our database. Then spent a couple of weeks on adding APIs, documenting the APIs, adding authentication to the APIs, and then spent two weeks building out the contact application, a physical user interface using ASP.NET MVC. Uh, after we did that, we spent the last day, which was essentially Tuesday, kind of starting the migration. For this particular one, we created an instance of a SQL Server database, as well as building out the copying the data over from one to the next and today we're going to look at what changes we need to make in our application in order to move the code to start calling the sqlite database it's actually pretty easy because of the way we built out the application so let's go take a look i believe i've already started the database let me Check that. Docker. Yep, database is up and running as we see here. The manager has started. I'm using a Mac which doesn't run SQL Server unless you're using something like Docker. And I have the Linux version of SQL Server running. I could have deployed it, you know, on a VM or something, but I want to figure out how to do work with docker and containers and later on in another another stream we might take this app and containerize it to allow us to deploy so that's running let's go take a look at our application so here you see in writer we have two different data sources created one referencing our uh, sql light instance and one representing our SQL Server instance. We go look at the contacts, make sure we have at least one. We should have, I think, five in here. There are four. Oh, that's right. I deleted one. There's a 
person's name that I created that I didn't really want in there. Uh, so we have our database, but now we have to point our code to it. So if you remember, or, or part of a previous uh, stream, we have these different projects laid out, APIs, console, data, data.sqlite, domain, blah, blah, blah. All these, all these components or projects serve a certain function in here. So the data is what is the main interaction between the multiple different data bases that we could have and our application. So our logic application uses the service provider, manager, business layer that will talk to the repository. So here we tell it, give it a contact repository. The contact repository says, give me anything that implements a I contact repository. Give me anything that implements an I contact data store. So for the last month or so, we've been working with this data store, which is our SQLite data store. So now we're going to go and change that. Luckily for us, the models are very similar. Honestly, they're exactly the same because we just copied over the database. So this should be relatively easy for us to do. I'm going to start by adding a new project. And then let's call that, we want to make it a class library. And to be consistent, we are going to call it contacts because we don't have enough projects named contacts. That's just the initial space. And then do data and then SQL server. So this makes it a little bit clearer what we're doing. And the beauty of this is now when we, if we were to make this application a public application, which we ultimately will, but I'm talking like for selling and stuff, you can say, oh, you want to use SQL Server? Do this. You want to do SQLite? Do this. So you're not you're not uh, restricting the backend data source to any particular technology. So let's go click Create. Get this message. Yes, always add. Get tired of clicking on that and then as normal we delete the last file so let's delete you and then what do we do now so we're going to need to add references to sql server here so let's do that manage new get packages then i'm going to do uh microsoft dot and the framework, and then any framework core SQL server, and click add, because I want to add it to that project, click install. Wait a minute or two, and it's successfully installed. So now it has the ability to talk to SQL server, but we don't have any of the code. So luckily, our contact context is going to stay the same. So let's copy and paste that into here. Control edit, copy, edit, paste. And then, yes, we're going to add it, but we want to change this to SQL Server. And let's get rid of this. We are going to change this to SQL Server Models because they're ultimately going to be different. And then let's just copy this whole folder here. Now we're only copying and pasting this because uh, we're using any framework and we kept the database the same. But if you change the database, like if we go and decide to use, let's say, uh, DynamoDB or 
Cosmos DB and we decide to go with like a document model, it would be very easy for us to change and we're not going to have to do anything else with it. We just have to change these models. So let's just got to go and update all these. Server. SQL. The reason why I'm doing it manually is because I'm afraid that uh, Resharper and Writer might rename some of the other classes in the other libraries. So for now, I'm just going to do manually. And then SQL Server. Now we should be good. Oh, I got to add auto mapper. That's why they're all highlighted. Let's add auto mapper. Uh, I can do that pretty easily here. Go to solution. And let's look up auto mapper. Computer is going a little bit slower right now because uh, the Docker is running behind the scenes and I have it set to use uh, six gig of memory, which pretty much is taxing <laughs> the computer right now. So I apologize, it's a little bit slower. The good news is I have a new computer on order that should be coming hopefully within the next two weeks. And they'll be just dedicated for streaming. And now it's complaining about the domain project, but that's just because we don't have the domain class added. And let's add that, and I want it domain. Now I think everything should be good. What are you complaining about? Oh, last bit. The last thing here is instead of use SQLite, use SQL Server connection string. We're going to want to keep the same, uh, but if we want, we can do contacts, database, and then SQL Server. And then let's go and change this one to contacts. Oops. This one to contacts database SQL light. This allows us the ability to just keep them separate. And I don't have to keep remembering the syntax in case we ever go back and forth. And then in our API, we're going to want to let's copy and paste you out. C, let's put a comma there, control B. And we'll call this one SQL Lite and this one SQL Server. And I don't think case sensitivity matters. Now I need to change this connection string, which do, 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 do. I have to do somewhere uh, that I remember the connection string format. I think we had it in the cons. Oh, I undid it. Okay. Let's go back and do entity framework SQL connection string. Um, we got to put the password in here, which is going to stink. So I am going to do that off screen for a second and then change it back only because I don't want anyone to see it. Doesn't matter, it's a randomly generated uh, uh, randomly generated password so I can always change it. Maybe I'll just create a new user with the new password that's only applicable to this database. Let's do that first. Uh, 
let's get the connection string right and then we'll go and add a new user. So the server in our particular case is dot. And there's actually ways that I can hide it by doing uh, user secrets, but I want to bring that for another episode. And then I believe we call the database contacts. And then user ID. Underscore ID, I think it is. Equals, let's do contact user password equals. Uh, as word. I think that's the right syntax for user ID passwords. Good news is there's an actual site that you can go and get like every possible combination. Here, this is one of them. So I want uh, do, 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 do. that one. Common connection strings. I want that one. I want that one. User instance. Nope, that's not the one I want. Just do search for password. User space ID. I don't know the score. Okay. Now we're going to have to create this user. So I can do that with SQL Server directly. So let's go to new query. Open Query Console, and I think it's Create User, and then we call it Contacts underscore User with Password equals Password one. I think I got the syntax right. It's been a while I did this, but I just did it like two weeks ago. So and then we're gonna have to uh, give that right to read and write. Let's make sure I got that part right. Continue database. I'm going to go off screen for a second because I do have a script somewhere. Bear with me one second. The script has some passwords in it, so, so I don't want to show it on screen. Uh, at least I think it has passwords in it. Projects, databases, store backup. Ha, close. So, there we go. There's actually no passwords in there. I was smart enough to put the script to be password agnostic. So uh, I got to do use master and then let's call this contacts underscore user 
And then we want the password to be JPA SWORD1. Use contacts and then create user contacts user for login contacts user. And then we want to grant that user the ability to add, remove, delete. Go. So if this runs correctly, we should have a new user. And then we'll create that same user in the database. And then give them the permission. So let's execute. Don't know if that worked or not, or if I have to select them all. Yes, I guess I have to select all the text. So now we have that user. So now in our readme here, this should work now. The user should be able to connect. So now we wired up the database. Right. We have our contacts, we have our model, and we have the data store. Oh, let's rename the data store here. Oh, wrong one. Let's, oh, we don't have the data store part. So we have the contacts. Now we're going to copy this over to give us the data store. But uh, this we want to change. It should be a SQL server. And then we want to be very explicit. This should be SQL server data store. Here, this is SQL server models. And then SQL server. What am I missing? SQL server, and one more. This happens when you have fully qualified names here. That's only because of a lot of the data mapping. So now it should be good to go. We are ready to flip it over and start calling the database. But now we have to tell our application to use SQL server instead. If you remember during our startup in our API, we tell the application or we tell the framework with our dependency injection, which ones to use. So the repository stays the same and the context stays the same. But now instead of using this, we simply say use SQL Server instead. And then I'm just going to comment this out in case we swap back and forth. This is complaining because it doesn't know anything with SQL Server Data Store, but luckily with Rider, I can just hit Alt Enter and it'll add the reference. Now, our application, assuming I got everything correct, should be able to go directly to SQL Server. <laughs> hey, Christos, how you doing? Didn't notice I had another window blocking the chat. Migration should be good. I do have to talk to you, though. I did have a problem with the code and I got to with the identity stuff. We need to figure out a, a challenge. I haven't decided if I'm opening up an issue not with it or not, but uh okay so now if i hit play in the api let's start the api hit play it should have start in a second it usually appears on a different screen and then let's get you queued up because you're going to be next. 
has to go compile because I added extra references, so it takes longer than normal. Pretty much had to rebuild the application. And now it started. And then you notice our web UI didn't have to change because we are calling out to an API now. So the client for the application really doesn't care. It says my API is the same. API calls are the same no matter what the data store is because we return a common set of models. Right now we return everything that's inside this domain inside of our database or inside of our data stores we do the conversion from whatever the database is using out to the common domain model so your user interface in this case the um, contact viewer which i gotta bring back down on the screen this doesn't really care about it because it's making an API call out and that API call is returning back a common model. So if I go here and I got everything correctly, it takes a second for the first time to log in. I haven't logged in in two days, so my tokens are garbage right now. It happened. What happened? Mapper. Oh, my mappers are bad. That shouldn't be. What would be wrong in the mappers? Oh, I forgot to copy over the mappers. Oops. My bad. No, oh, there are no mappers there. Why did you fail? Let's see what the message is here in the API. Invalid status code, yeah, fail. It failed. Come on, where'd you go? I'm in the API. Let me check the API what failed. Starting here, invalid, unable. Oh, system type string. That is because we changed our database model uh, going from SQLite to SQL Server. SQLite doesn't have the concept of date times. So our models in SQLite uh, just have strings. So we have to stop them all and go and change that. So I think that's only in the contact. Date time, date time. And where is that? That's here. Not that here. Those are date times. Why are you complaining about a string? It, did I create the databases as a string? Oh, yes, I did. Oh, it was my bad. Uh, let's see if I can modify them with that. Hopefully, I can alter them. Didn't think I could crud. We have to recreate the databases because I messed them up. But another good thing about this is that we can we don't have to necessarily convert them. We can just say this is a string and then this is a string. We don't have to do the nullable. And then inside of our mapper, the mapper should be able to handle all that. Let's see if I'm right. I think the mapper is here. Do I have a mapper profile anywhere? I don't remember where the mapper profile was. Actually, don't need, oh, there it is, contact profile. So, 
here we can add on the extra mappings to say take this from a string and send it off ideally we want to actually convert the database but let me make sure that this works and then we should be good we can go back and fix the database afterwards web ui api first oh not iss express play that starts we get the UI going come back here and click contacts I have my fingers crossed and toes crossed so the error we experienced was just my error so even though the database says it's a string, we use the mapping to come back and it worked. So the problem we saw was just an error. So if I come back here and uh, edit Brady, Brady's birthday is really not one one. I think it's uh, 12, 25 and he's really young. So we're gonna make him 2000 and hit save. And Brady is updated. Now, if we go back and look at the database, we should see that uh, Brady was updated here to 1224 2000. But if we go back to our contacts, the original database, we should see that that wasn't touched because now we're migrated over to SQL Server. And there's Brady and his birthday is one one still. So we successfully migrated over and kept the date time fields or kept the date time as a string, but was able to change the application accordingly. Uh, but I really don't like that and I want to change it back. So considering we still have 25 minutes, let's go and mess around with that. I think it's just a matter of getting the SQL script right. And let me get the alter table syntax right. Alter table SQL server. Da -da -da -da. Ah, I love this. It's just, bleh, it's like someone threw up every possible exception. I want to just see a, I want to change one column. Go back to the here. This is really what I want right there. It's trying to show the actual docs. Alter table blah 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 alter column this is this is what i really want to see so let's go back to here and make sure we are in the right database so i don't want to be in that database i want to be in this database so let's go and open query console use contacts go just to make sure we're in there alter table we want to alter table contacts alter column name birthday and then we want it be a date time not null that should work. Might have a problem because there's a string in there and it doesn't know how to handle it. That's the case, we're gonna have to use a tool to do it or just recreate it from scratch. To play. Data type, date time, yeah. 
Let's go and see if there's an easy way. I can do a insert out. Uh, uh, let's see if I can find a quick script to do it. Uh, updates equals server column string to date time. Convert string to date time is equal to and what that hitting column defaulting convert our car column to date time. Yeah, those are converting. Date SQL server column, let's say alter SQL server. Alter column. Ah, let's see if this one has it. Sometimes the best programming is just knowing how to Google or Bing something. No one solved the problem before. Gonna get that here. Update me set good standardized day format. Something like this third argument is the format. Or you can try yeah per alter column add column update leaves set. As date alter column leads dot column create. Oh, that's a good way. I like that way. Kind of cheating, but it works. For essentially, what we're doing is adding a column to it, then uh, dropping the old column, then renaming the old one to the new one. So Alter table contacts, create a new birthday, set new birthday. And depending on the size of the database, you may or may not want to do this. This one's out relatively small, so it's only going to go through four records. But if you're dealing with a couple of thousand, you probably want to find a bit better way of doing it. So we're going to do contacts.new birthday to birthday. Okay. We want to rename from here to that. And then we just need this birthday because it's there now. Birthday and then birthday. Now let's run this all. Ah, darn it. Should be contacts, contacts. Incorrect syntax. Where is the incorrect syntax? Alter table. Add column. Date. Update context set. New birthday equal past. The might be this one spelling. What's failing? Oh, this is failing. What's wrong? Your table. That's what I have. Okay. Um, uh, 
Uh, what did I do? Alter table is right. Got the syntax right. Alter table contacts. Oh, horse come source can do this column. Call it new birthday. Get a date time. Another one and call this new anniversary. It's a date time and then execute. Now I should have two new fields there. Now we just need to do a conversion. So let's see what the format is of that black star for select birthday from contacts execute so ooh, lots of different formats there depends on where it came from so, I edit this. Nope, tables are only. Let's update Brady's number. I don't remember what that was. Luckily, it got open here. Nope, it opened somewhere. Let's check these other windows. Nope. 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 Contact SQL Server. Brady is number 36. So I'm just going to update the format of it so it's consistent. The contacts where contact ID. There we've got the number. 36 set birthday equal to 2000 dash 12 dash 24. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because the way the casting works is it kind of needs to be in the same format otherwise we have to do just stuff to try and get it to be right oh so i should update brady set birthday oh too much c code it's not double quotes it's single quotes now if we look at the numbers they are correct so now, actually, no one really has a time, so we can just do update contacts, cast, right, left, right, times four. No, we don't want to do that. Right times four. No, we want to do two left. Wow, that's really messed up. Why don't we just do this? Um, manually update all the birthdays, since they're all just made up anyway. I don't have to write all the code for it. So let's do just contact ID, birthday, anniversary is what I Select contact ID, comma, birthday, comma, anniversary from contacts. Now, if you didn't notice, I have a bunch of commands here. It's something I do a lot. I keep the commands open. I'll eventually go back and delete them all. 
So what we want to do is update the new one. So it's going to be update contacts set anniversary or let's do set um, new birthday equal to Actually, I think we can do the cast. Cast, and then. Oh, look at that. We can do this. Let's try that. Might be a lot easier to do. Try that one first. I don't do a lot of extra figuring out the math. Contacts. Want this to be new birthday. If you don't know, the uh, brackets like that are just saying that it is uh, space involved in the field. You don't put spaces. You never like spaces in column names. Let's see if that works. So now if we select this and let's add in birthday comma new birthday anniversary comma new anniversary. It doesn't recognize it's there because it haven't refreshed it since we added it last. You couldn't convert them because probably this formatting is off. The third argument is month month format mentioned in the comment. This will convert note if very backup table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do try convert SQL server at the right format SQL server. Try convert. Okay, it's just got to find the right number. And ours is this format, 121. So if we set this to 121, it should work. Explicit from, what was it, date time? Time. Why are you not working? You should be working. Up to contact set new birthday equals try convert. I convert data type that you wish to convert to. Blah blah. Expression value to convert from another an optional style. When casting from floater numeric to an integer, try convert or truncate. Yeah, it's fine. Try convert flow. Try convert date time. That should work. New birthday. Date time format. At the date time there. At the field birthday 
and telling it 121. Get the message. Let's run again, see what the message says. Yes, I know about that. Explicit conversion from data type text. It's not explicit. Let's go and open it up in our SQL Explorer. Maybe it's just something I have with. Uh, writer. Again, this is optional. We already have the code working. I just want to make it a date time. So here's the script. I don't know why I didn't think of doing it then. So, ooh, that's not Save. New. Connect. Contacts. Password fail because I didn't save the password. Hold on a second. Got to go off to my other screen. Ah, uh, badoy, 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 badoy. Insiders and. I'm just going to lift this off the screen for a second because I don't remember if it shows the password or not. Remember password for now. Connect. And I just pasted the password in there. But, uh, copy and paste this. From this explicit conversion, I don't understand why it's doing that. Set new birthday. Let's try. Let's try this and see what happens. Select. Try convert. Um, contacts and see what it comes. Up. That's the whole purpose of try convert. We get it. Why are you not working? Try convert can be following versions. This command is old now. Using SQL. Well, syntax is the same. Okay, it's my that day format. Looks like it should work. I don't know what this date format is. Say, let's see if I can ask it. Or what is the syntax of it or the format? Four digit 
four dash two dash two. Screen. Looks like this one. That the second parameter with century. Let's try it with the convert and see if that works. Let's see, 120. I don't care about the seconds. Cass is different format. So, Cass. Uh, And for the four fields, I could have just updated them already, which I think I'll just do. So we got those four there. Set new birthday equal to. And I could just do zero five dash three one dash one nine. Hundred, comma, new anniversary, and twenty six nine nine six. Contact ID. One, let's just make sure I got the format right. That worked. So let's copy and paste this times four. Twenty-one thirty-six thirty-eight by Dash twenty dash oh eight eight and his anniversary was zero five slash seventeen slash twenty twenty. This was twelve slash twenty four slash. 2000 and this is null. And then last one is 12 dash 31 with an anniversary of 07 dash 01. Kind of late in life to get married. Execute. And now if I select them, they should all be populated now. New fields are populated. Now let's go to here, which is the alter table, drop column. Or table contacts drop column anniversary that's done and then we want to rename these New anniversary, and if 
anniversary. Execute that. Might have to do them one at a time. Because these are sword procedures and they need to have the uh, go statements after them. You batch them together. All right, done. Now if I refresh this, the contact should look the right way. Ah, oh, got the name. Got the parentheses in there. Don't want that. This. And then let's change this. I don't know why it actually has those in there. Well, probably because I have it in the single quotes. That's probably why. It's probably taking it as a hard coded string at that point. See. Uh, doesn't recognize the difference. Let's see if I can just rename this here. I don't need that. Working there, but let's try it here. I don't know if it actually ran or not. I don't think it ran because, let's see if I refresh this, it's still there. It's still there. Uh, speed rename. Try this. Time to Google it. It's got four execute in there. Engineering test, AC type. Let's try that. That's why it pays to get stuff done right the first time. <laughs> so I don't have to suffer like this, but I think we've figured it out now. Cursory. Now if I refresh this, I should be good. Nice. So birthday and anniversary are there. Now we can come back to 
our model and change it back to a date time a date time question mark so we should be good to go now let's stop all Launch the API, launch the UI, close all these windows because we don't need them all now. Come back to contact. API didn't start yet, right? API didn't start. No, oh, it's on. Got to it too quick. What are we complaining about? What are we complaining? It's not started. Look like it was started. I'm sorry. Now it's started. There we go. If I view myself, there we go. Now everything's hunky dory. We got the Dates, we convert it over to SQL Server, and we have different data types now in there. That is all I had. We'll publish the updates in a little bit, and you'll be able to follow on. Coming up next week or over the weekend, we're going to look at publishing this to the cloud. We'll create a Azure instance and start deploying our stuff so anyone can play along. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions or comments, want to reach out, feel free to reach out to me on any of the social media that's up on the screen in a second. And I can be reached there. Have a great day. I'll chat with you next time.